Okay, folks, uh, four before record. I know everybody or quite a few people is waiting around to see this, but uh, here's the plan. One of the reasons I had held up on this is the engine I put in here is going to need some work. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 8.2 in here with the transmission. Now I got the DT466 and I thought about putting it in here, but I did a little measuring before. And with my transfer case, I didn't want to have to move it back and do a bunch of changing. That V8's a lot shorter. So that's what we're going to do. The 8.2 is going in this. Uh, the 7.3 is coming out. And uh, when I ran this, some of y'all probably remember me running it. Uh, it was blowing a lot of black smoke at idle, but it overheated on me sitting. And I'm wondering if it don't have a crack on the head. Uh, I bought it without knowing a lot about it. And so I don't, I just don't trust it. Don't trust it at all, actually. And, uh, and I hate building something and using something that I'm not sure of. So we're going to get started on pulling the engine out, putting it in. Uh, shouldn't be, you know, a terrible job. Uh, I've got the other wheel adapters in there. I got to pick up some more studs. We'll go ahead and get the uh, get the big tires on the front. I've got to do the offset a little different on the front rims, and we've got to get some air in these tires and stuff. But uh, I'm actually going to while we're out here moving stuff, we're going to pick up that wrecker unit that's going to go on here, and we're going to I'm going to set it on here so I can get a few little measurements, and uh, we'll just take the forklift and sit it down. I haven't put it up there yet. But uh, we're going to check it out. Now, this is probably going to be my lift cylinder for the boom. You know, I've already made the cylinder to go for the roll, you know, sliding it back and forward. Uh, I've got to get back into doing a bunch of welding on this, a bunch of bracing. And uh, shouldn't, you know, be a big issue. And uh, I've got to catch up on what I've done and what I didn't do. I think I've got some more welding to do on the other side. I haven't finished up. No, I have finished up. Okay, I haven't my gussets. I've got to finish welding them so we'll have to get it all cleaned back up so we can weld it. And uh, yeah we're just gonna get back on it and see what we can get done slowly. And uh, But for now we're gonna get that boom set on there. I just want to get get an idea of where that's gonna put us. Uh, you know what kind of overhang we're gonna have. You know I can do all the measures in the world but I've got to go measure, walk back, measure, walk back and uh, I'd just like to set it up there and then we can get a good idea. So let me show you. Okay, folks, first thing we got to do is take all the hoses, control valves, everything off the bottom side of this thing. Eventually, this is going to come off. It'll come down to this plate, which looks like about a 3 8 plate. Uh, that's actually going to mount on our 3 quarter inch thick plate, which that plate will mount on our slewing gear or a turntable bearing or a turret, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so that's what we're doing now. We've got a pressure relief valve to get out of the way, and then we've got a control valves and a few other little things and then we'll set it up there and at least see what it's uh what it looks like okay got the lines unhooked now we're getting ready to pull the control valves off for anybody that don't know this is a 475 unit i looked for a long time well 475t the t's for twin line but i looked for a long time for one of these and the reason was is this sits up really high and when this is on a, a one ton truck it's actually the winches are up in the back window and this is the style that I wanted. The angles on it, the way you know, the way I wanted to do it. But we are going to change this. We're not going to run the cylinder back in and there. We're going to run the cylinder. We're going to cut this out. We're going to run the cylinder all the way down to the main frame, and we're going to run the cylinder farther out on the uh, on the boom. So when we're done, we'll get we'll have a longer cylinder. We'll have basically the same lift. Uh, so the boom will come up the same angle. But we're going to do away with all of this overhang. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And that's going to give us a little, little more strength. I wanted to show you this. I have never seen this before in my life. That's some weird cable clamp. I don't think I would trust that whatsoever. That's a new one on me for sure. Yeah. We 
get that way some. You need to come this way some too. You come which one? That's good right there. Hold on, I can go back to you. What'd you do yesterday, Noah? Tell everybody what you done yesterday. What? What'd you do yesterday? Did you work hard? Yep. Really it's hard. kinda hard to work hard at a car show, buddy. Yep. It was fun. Driving the 55. <laughs> the dream truck. The turbo diesel truck? Yes, sir. It's not a Honda, though. No. It's got way more torque than a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay, we got it sitting on. It's on pretty good. Uh, worked out about like I was wanting it. And we got about the right amount of overhang off the tailboard, which is fine. And let me see. It'll work out real well. Now, when I'm done, there'll be a three quarter plate under this, and it'll be mounted on top of this. It'll be bolted into this. So, We've got to finish cleaning the bottom side of that, but so I'm gonna set up about three quarters more. And this is three quarter here below it. I know it's kind of heavy, but I'd rather not take a chance on it. So we've got to get to work on that. We're gonna get to work on outriggers, and then uh, we got rear outriggers to do yet. We just mounting these tires. Well, this one's got air. But and like I said, the, the adapters for the front, I gotta finish up. So. But it's coming out good. It's uh, about like I want it. With uh, having the slowing gear here, we've actually got still got the winches and boom up here. So that's what I was working, working on, hoping. That's why I was looking for a 475 like it was. So anyway, so once this is done, and all the hydraulics are hooked up I'll basically go in we'll build a tailboard on it and the tailboard will probably be permanent and then we'll build two bolt on toolboxes down the side so the sides of this record was, is basically going to be two toolboxes and uh, you know with the doors and everything they'll be separate and then they'll get set on and that, it, it'll make it look just like a bed the, open, the center will be open just like the last record I built and uh, that way it's easy access to work on. You can actually pull a toolbox off if you have to to work on it. But uh, it's just going to work out good. But glad to finally get a little bit of time to mess with it. And uh, we've got a lot of hoses going to be run. Uh, another thing about changing out the engine, I'm going to change to the 5-speed. So we'll be able to run a PTO on the 5-speed. This Allison does not have a PTO gear in it. And I've got a triple pump I want to run. So... We can't run a triple pump off a belt. So we're going to run a triple pump. So we'll have three stages. Uh, each stage will have a separate set of control valves. Uh, I'll probably run the biggest stage because they're different gallons per minute. But the, the biggest stage I've got, I'll be running on the winches because it takes more flow than pressure. And then the uh, two smaller stages will run. Probably the smallest stage will run all the outriggers and everything. And then the other one will run the boom up and down, in and out. So... I think I figured it was going to be 12 control valves total. So we can split it up between three sets of control valves and uh, make it a little easier. So anyway, didn't get much done, but we got a little bit done. So got the uh, weeds cut off of it. So we'll probably use uh, 
probably end up using the radiator and the engine transmission everything out of the GMC in this and uh, I think it'll be a, a whole lot better unit because I, I wasn't trusting this engine I didn't like it now we're still going to use our same nose the the 2002 IC International front end all right we're going to take a little ride in the 55 and we're going to actually do the speedometer on it I don't have one in it so uh, Noah's going to check it and we're going to see what the max speed is with this for this gear and then uh, once we change it out we'll we'll actually have uh, have something to compare it to so here you go now Okay, folks, we're back. We lost boost again, and you can see why. This stuff gets so soft when it gets warm, so this is just for an uh, air cleaner. So we're going to go ahead and order this two and a half to three, and then it goes from three down to two and a half. So we're going to try to do some two and a half inch piping on it, and probably just make a pipe, and go ahead and get that right and get some good stuff on it that I know ain't going to give any trouble. Uh, 56 mile an hour top speed, that's not good. That's at the RPMs I got it set at. I mean, I can increase the RPMs, but I don't want to do that. Not right now, anyway. So, uh, we will be swapping that rear end out pretty soon, too. And uh, we've got the parts all but the bearing. I need to go with a new bearing or get a new bearing, but everything else is ready to go. So, all right. Appreciate everybody watching. Bye.